Hey guys, welcome back. I keep saying I'm gonna do this Gigantia tomorrow. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm gonna run out of tomorrows because, <clears throat> excuse me, right now is the best time to do this. She's working on this leaf. Look how much wider this one is and she's not done with it as opposed to this one that she grew in 2023. This one she started towards the end of 23, but this is why we need to get her into her setup, which I'm not changing anything. She's gonna go into moss. The original idea that I had is when my mother-in-law was sick, they made um, like this mesh mask for some sort of a test that they were doing. And I was gonna cover it in burlap where you can kind of see the outline of her face. But then the more I thought about it, I think it'll get ruined with putting a orchid in it. So I'm, st I'm still gonna utilize that. I'm still gonna try to use that somehow, but I just haven't quite decided how, just not with this girl. So this is the Phalaenopsis gigantea. And this particular one is Phalaenopsis gigantea yen number two crossed with Phalaenopsis gigantea yen the best. Cannot wait. I've had this one almost a year now. She's been in this lovely setup for about a almost a year. I got her in April of 23. It's right at the beginning of April, end of March, 2024. I'm going to check the moss. If the moss is still good, I am going to use it. Squeeze the port here. She does have, looks like some roots that probably are going to need to get cut off. Oh, you know what? Before I did that, I want to, nope, I'm just going to leave the, the bark and mix the bark in with this. I do have some more moss over here in this tub in front of us that also has some little bark and perlite in it as well. And I did have to add some water to it. Let me just kind of mix it up a little bit so that the water can go throughout. The plan is to hang her on the wall because the pictures that I've seen, these guys can get pretty big. So I want her to have all of the space in the world to grow. I'm just gonna gently remove this moss or loosen it. Let me smell it. Oh yeah, it still smells nice and fresh. This is that, I, uh, I call it the liquid a gold for a reason. It lasts for quite a some time. The setup she's gonna go in is a little, not the setup, the pot she's gonna go in is a little more airy. So she'll have a little more more air around her roots and such. Okay, there's one. Let me make sure I pick out any of the desiccated roots that happen to come off with the moss. It looks like that was it. Perfect, all right. Well, since we're gonna be using that, let me just put that in there and that'll help, help moisten everything else. And this is just gonna be real quick. Let me get her roots that are about cleaned up. And they're not that many, actually. I'm kind of shocked that I don't have more desiccated roots. It's just a few actually. So let's get those cleaned off real quick. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to put her in. Anybody else have a Gigantia? And if so, has yours bloomed? And if it has bloomed, send me a picture so I know what to look forward to. It doesn't necessarily have to be this one. I enjoy seeing pictures online, but I actually enjoy seeing pictures of, of people that I talk to more often. So I can kind of see, oh, we've got a, it's a branching root system. So for those of you never seen a Gigantia. Just like with most fowls, it has a nice branching root system. We got some lovely branches going on there. This one here is all dried out, so we're going to cut that branch off and maybe encourage some more growth off of there and cut there. And then although this one is still nice and firm, I'm just going to cut it off right at the tip. And then that one, let's see. All right, I think, nope, we got this one over here too. We've got that beautiful new root coming off right here. And then also that one there with the nice bright tip. So that is a good time, even though I'm not changing anything, it will be less stressful for her if we get her while she's actually growing new roots so that, you know what, I'm just gonna cut that off too because it is kind of kinked there since I don't, I'm just gonna set her right here. Since I'm not gonna use the mask that I originally wanted to use, I'm going to reuse this basket that I had already kind of had something else in. And what I had in there was my Vanda 
summery pink crossed with Cal Kulwandi fragrance that I got from the Orchid Supply Store in September of 22. Well, somebody messed up. So she was hanging on the wall, like so. And I was going through and just kind of spraying because I was being lazy. Probably didn't pay attention and I got water in the crown and she rotted. A little upset at myself for that, but what do you do? You move on. Put a little bit of, I've already got some large Vandebark at the bottom just to kind of help with airflow and to keep the, the moss from really getting too in there. And then again, I'm going to use some mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal fungi and this is the brand that I prefer. This is the one I've been using now for almost a year and a half. No sponsorship. You can get it from Amazon. If I remember, I'll put, the, I'll put a link to the Amazon site for you. Again, I will not get any kind of compensation if you buy that particular brand. It's just the brand that I prefer. It's probably the, because that's the brand that I started. Sorry about that, guys. Had to turn it off real quick. The puppers started barking at the people outside. So now, I am going to set her actually. So... I need to really pay attention to what I'm doing because she's got, I've already got a hook here. She's going to be hanging like this. So I want to kind of put her up closer to the top so that she has plenty of room below. So technically this is kind of what we're looking at. This is kind of how I want her to sit. So she's going to be kind of empty right in here. But over time she is going to fill in that spot. So let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's just... Let's just cut that one too. No, let's not because it, it, let me put it up under. So I was debating on cutting this one because it kind of looked bad, but that is from seaweed discoloration. That is not because the root is bad. She's actually got a little brancher coming off of those. So we're going to get all of these roots into a leput and turn her around, Oop, turn her around. So I'm going to want her about right, right there. So there's the hook. Let's see, there's the hook. And then kind of right there. So she's going to be sitting pretty far back. But I'm hoping also with allowing her kind of leaves to hang down that that will encourage more growth. I don't know if that has anything to do with the growth of this particular type of orchid. There's not a lot out there on this orchid as far as that goes. So I'm just kind of going by instinct, which isn't always on a point, but it is most of the time. It's kind of how I grow everything, not just my orchids, but my house plants and everything else is just kind of do it by instinct. What does the plant tell me it wants or would prefer? Most of the time I get it right. Some of the time I get it wrong. All right, I'm going to finish filling this up, and then we will see what she looks like after that. One sec. So there she is hanging up. So right now she's kind of sitting more like a regular fowl, kind of flat. But I feel like as the leaves mature, she's going to kind of fill all this up. So I'm excited. She kind of looks cute next to that. And if I have to move something to give her her space... She will take the priority. All right, everybody. Hope you liked the video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you don't mind. And I'll see you next time.